pretty much on par. Positive all around. So uh, a little bit of news there. Nothing too crazy happened from it, but just making you guys aware. All right, let's see. Okay. Yep, there's that news you could see all right here. Green, green, green. Right, slightly positive USD news. But anyway, guys, hope you guys had a good weekend. Hope you guys are ready to start the week. This is the first live session of the week. And yeah, we're excited. We're going to get into it pretty soon. Just going to check. 29 people. I'm just going to get right into it then. All right. Yeah, it's fine. All right, this is recorded as always. And will be uploaded to YouTube. If you guys to review, check out oh, yeah. the... DXY, hopefully DXY just falls. Yeah, it's looking interesting right now. So yeah, let's get right into it. DXY here, guys, this is US dollar index. Makes up for 80% of all trade in the Forex market. Is also considered the reserve currency of the world. So real quick, let's do a one look on the daily time frame. Just trying to identify sentiment, identifying trend here. And it's very bullish, as we can see. Very, very bullish. Most significant area that we can identify is this monthly zone right here around 95 flat where we saw a break of resistance over here, retest as support, and then retest as support again upon Corona news. And now it looks like we're heading towards that area as well. We have a good amount of bearish pressure here on the daily time frame after the symmetrical triangle fell out. Good amount, price action pulled back on a retracement to the 50% and kind of broke this ascending triangle pattern. So now it's looking like it's another leg to the downside. So let's drop to a four hour time frame and see if we can see anything at more current current price action. So here's that ascending triangle I was talking about. Here's a bearish channel pushing outside that pattern, breaking lower, nice lower high formation. And you know the key area that is established right now where this double bottom was is 96.25. So we're looking to get below that nice break and retest. I want to enter on a lower high, looking for you know this bearish leg to continue off this lower high here. And we could see it we can see price action reach all the way down towards our monthly at 95 flat or negative 27 even, a little bit lower than 95. So this is definitely looking bearish overall. I mean, this is just one hell of a trend. This huge breakout, a little bit of consolidation, got this pattern, and then we're breaking out again. So there could definitely be a lot more momentum to the downside in the next uh, you know, uh, week or so. So we'll be watching, just keeping that in mind. Definitely looking bearish on the US dollar. All right, let's move on to AU, which has been kind of moving crazy in the, on this four-hour time frame. I'll get to that in a second. First thing we want to do is go to the daily time frame, identifying sentiment, see if anything has changed. Again, I know I say this a lot, but it, you know, it's so true. You always want to just be you know, doing a one look on the daily. You can see that it's very bearish. You know, what needs to break for us to start considering long opportunities or a change in sentiment? And that's this area right here, this monthly. So where this prior lower high was, it's definitely an established level of resistance. Yes, ma. And to um, you know, go bullish on this, we need to see a break of this monthly resistance. All right, so let's go to the four hour. We can clearly see this is this is a huge four hour trend. So like it, it dropped down from Corona news and then came back up pretty swiftly off this area, off this monthly zone down here. And now it's just forming a very strong bullish trend all right let's get a little closer look all right so this is the top of it where that prior lower high was that significant area that monthly resistance that i told you guys about on the daily time frame that's this right here currently getting an ascending channel it's a pretty broad one it was originally like an ascending triangle but now it's just even broader kind of just expanding this and making this more of a channel now but if we zoom in a little bit closer, we could see that we've been getting tons of ranging right between this level, 699, and right here, 693. These two zones, you can just see clearly bouncing, 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 bouncing. So we're really looking for a break of this. We really want to see a break to the upside or downside to get a better idea where price action is going. I mean, you could play this range. You know, but there's no saying how many times it'll continue to range. You know, a breakout is pretty imminent. So we'll be waiting for either a break to the upside or downside. You know, if you did want to take some price action, you know, entries, you just play the range. But again, there's a lot of risk incurred with that. So it's up to you. But ultimately, you would want to see this. To get a clear break that shows conviction, you know, you want to see a, always a break in retest. 
So like this. So like this real quick, right? And then you would enter, you would enter on a, a higher low on a break of 0 0.699 or looking for a lower high entry on a break of 693. And then you just target significant support, 0 0.685. That'd be a great area to target. Either one of these scenarios would work. Just waiting for those confirmations, or you can play the range. But uh, I mean, definitely looking more bullish on AU here. So next target, significant resistance would be around 0 0.708. So definitely, this is what it would look like. This is the more favorable trade in this scenario for what we're seeing on this time frame. Looking to get up around 80 pips or so, risk about 40. You'd want to be below this higher low. So you have a lot of protection here. You're breaking outside this channel. This trend line is acting as support. This well-established resistance would then be broken and then act as support. MAs would be there as well. Just enter on more confirmations and make sure your stop loss is you know, at a reasonable spot. 30 to 40 pips over a two to one risk reward. So it uh, could be a really good potential trade. Again, just looking for that break and retest, either direction. Okay, so that's AU. Move on to AJ. Looking very similar as well, they normally do. So let's go right to the daily. Again, see if anything's changed. Super bearish trend, very, very bearish, huge swings. Uh, currently at the prior lower high before this Corona news hit. So we're at that monthly resistance again, much like we saw on AU. So uh, until that breaks, you know, we have a daily bearish perspective, but you know, until that area breaks, then we could consider changing that perspective. So let's drop to a four hour. We do have a very strong four hour corrective trend. Uh, that's this huge push right here, all the way up to where we are now. So a break of that bearish channel, price action broke right through this channel, surged up to other monthly around 76 flat, came back in the form of a head and shoulders, nice reversal pattern pulled back to the top of the trend line at 72.6. And then just kind of has been forming this, you know, not so strong bullish channel, you know, that's low volume, but it is still, you know, uptrending, you know, higher, low, higher, low, higher, low. So, uh, I mean, we want to see a significant break. We want to see a larger move, a good amount of volume step into the market. We are getting a higher low here as per this trend kind of, you know, forecasted right off the 74 handle. So there are smaller time entries in here. I mean, you could always target the top of the channel near 76 flat, just kind of play the trend. Uh, or you kind of wait for a break to the downside or a significant move. You know, I'll show you this one. Because now this has happened, you want to get in on a retrace, another higher low. Just draw this across for you guys. Okay. So you want to see a significant break of 75, something like this. Any sort of higher low in this entire area, you know, you're looking for entries on based on, you know, confirmation. Now just kind of playing that trend, you know, or the downside move, always wait for a lower low, enter on a lower high, which would be right at 74. around here all right so yeah these are two potential short-term moves again you're just looking for that you know confirmation waiting for a break to the upside enter on a higher low break the downside enter on a lower high um it is looking more you know favorably bullish obviously because this huge four-hour trend so look for i'm going to turn my phone on do not disturb so yeah obviously look for you know that break or that huge Huge break here on the 75 area, and then enter on a higher low just to continue with this overall trend. Okay, so that's both scenarios. Always be aware of that. But I mean, this has been forming pretty good. Uh, you know, it's been trending pretty well. So that's AJ, guys. Waiting for that to play out. Just gonna be patient on it. Wait for the move kind of to come to us. Okay, so this is UJ. Let's jump right to the daily. We can automatically see that it's pretty bearish. This is a huge descending triangle pattern on, this is more so a weekly pattern. I'll just show you that real quick. Huge descending, very bearish, uh, clear support at this monthly level. Like just look at this pattern guys, right? Lower high, lower high, lower high. And then the lows are just pretty much all the same, okay? Descending triangle pattern. So let's get a better look at that monthly level. See what's kind of going on in this area. 
This is at a significant monthly level. Let's expand this a little bit. You know, this has kind of been ranging between this area here, between 109.25 and 106, but this is at the edge of that larger pattern. So we're expecting either more consolidation or a pretty violent, like, you know, breakout. So this is what's gonna, gonna happen here. So this is a 325 range, pretty big range. You could obviously play the range, but let's also zoom in a little more on current price action. We could see we're at a lower high here at the lower end of this range. So is it gonna continue down or is it gonna start breaking to the upside of the range? Let's get a closer look. Drop to the four hour. All right, so you can see here on the four hour, this is that pullback, this is that established daily lower high, this area right here. And then we're getting you know, some four hour lower highs. So is price actually pushing lower? Or are we gonna see this kind of break to the downside here? So we have another descending triangle, right? It broke through support already, tested it as resistance once, now for the second time, but also notice we're pulling back through the MAs. So we're also at the 618. This is a huge confluence area. The 200 EMA is there as well. Uh, you know, we could see a larger break or a larger reversal and see price action start heading down to, to the um, you know, monthly support again, around 106. Let's just do a one hour quick look, see what's going on. Right, we got a higher high actually, break of this, this level here at 61. So right now, pretty much only looking for MA crosses in the form of large bearish variations, uh, you know, to get back down below this resistance and then start making lower lows and lower highs. Okay, so this is definitely looking bearish for now still until we're pretty much out of this pattern on the four hour especially. Notice a little bit of exhaustion right off the 200 EMA. So we're gonna see how this one kind of plays out. All right, so that's UJ. Pretty detailed analysis. Again, we went down to the one hour, checked it out. So let's move on to EJ. I'm gonna clear this up for you guys and we'll redo it. All right, so first thing we wanna do, go to the daily time frame. Again, see if anything's changed. We always just wanna do that one look, remember. Huge bearish channel, a lot of bearish pressure. And this actually has some huge swings. I always do this just to show you guys the volatility on EJ, huge swings, you know, 1,000 pips there, even more back here, probably like 1,500-ish. Yeah, so huge, huge amount of movement on EJ. So overall bearish channel, again, but now price action started pushing up in a very strong four-hour four hour trend, uh, kind of breaking some lower highs here and then retesting the top of the trend line. So let's go and get a better look at what's going on over here on the four-hour time frame. Here's that huge bullish trend, pushed all the way up to the major resistance level at 123.5, came back, and then started consolidating. But we can see that it is still more or less a high volume, you know, steady trend. Not the strongest EJ trend, but you know, still an uptrend. You know, definitely getting these higher lows. It actually came back for a pretty big pullback, kind of went through this higher low, formed a new one, and then reversed off this level here. This was, this was actually pretty interesting to see. Let's do a price label. Right around 120.5. Huge support right there. 200 EMA as well. Just rejected and then continued higher. So it's showing that there is still, you know, bullish conviction that this is still very much a bullish trend on this time frame. So pretty much we want to see some sort of pullback, maybe a little more momentum into this zone. Kind of you know solidifying this zone as you know the new zone the new area for price action wait for a pullback get in on a structure level and then target back up towards 123.5 that could be an option let's take a look highlight it something like this protect yourself outside the ma's new higher low structure major support this would be a pretty good trade a three to one risk reward or you know if this is a fake out and this falls right back below. We're looking for any sort of transition, lower high, head and shoulder opportunities, anything like that. And then you just target back down towards major support. But uh, overall, the trend is very bullish still on this four hour time frame, especially if we look back. You can just see there's so much buying pressure. It's pretty insane. So if this decides to pop and starts taking off, this could definitely find itself back in the 123.5. Uh, area. 
Let's get a once look on the daily. Definitely looking possible. Got seven hours on a close for the day. So we'll be waiting on this one and kind of seeing how price action plays out. Okay. Last one is gold. Already on the daily time frame. Super, super bullish as always. Let's go ahead and zoom in on current price action a little more. We hit 1800, which is a huge, huge level, very significant. So this was a nice milestone for gold. Uh, definitely would have expected a little more selling pressure. So this could still drop. Definitely could drop to about 17.6, uh, you know, kind of at its max for our liking, considering, you know, we want to continue with the bullish trend. We want to enter on a moving average cross, the, like from the retracement and then back through on bullish, you know, confirmation. So back through the MAs. So it could be a really good trade here. Uh, it's looking like it's pulling back to the 38.2 a little bit, just on this daily time frame. Again, we're going to drop in a second, but just be aware, you know, 38.2 on the daily, 61.8 on the daily. This is about right around 1762. This is definitely looking bullish. Let's go to the four hour for a second. Yeah, we, it is pretty, you know, this is a huge move. This is a very, very good trend, good, healthy trend, you know, for structure to form is very, very likely and kind of needs to happen for us. So we want to see, just kind of wait on this for a second, see what happens. If it did push up a little higher to the weekly and then gave us the pullback, that would be nice as well. We'll be patient. That's fine. Uh, you just want to get in on, like a really, really good specifications for this trade because we did see such a large trade and we are at such a significant level. So we really want to wait for kind of all of our rules to be met before we kind of pull the trigger. All right, so gold looking good, played out well. Just kind of wait on it. Gold takes its time. So I'm just going to follow closely. All right, so quick recap. I went over DXY, AU, AJ, UJ, EJ, and gold, as you just saw. Okay, so I'm going to pass it off to Angelo. He's going to cover some of his. Yep. So for everybody in here, um, we're going to do a $25 giveaway. So all you need to do to enter the giveaway is to enter your name in the Discord chat. Um, so whatever your name is in our Discord, just post your username in the chat and it enters you guys in the giveaway. As always, if you guys have any questions um, throughout this call, just feel free to put it into the chat um, while we're going. And uh, you know, this, this chat is entirely for you guys. It's entirely for you guys. So take advantage um, the best way you guys can. So if you're not in the Discord chat, I'm just gonna drop the link to join. Boom, here you go. And then I'll go ahead and share my screen. Got all right. So we're gonna start off with Yusef. Let's start up. Let's bump up to the weekly time frame. So Yusef has been creeping down here for a little while. Um, I'm ultimately trying it for it to get to this support level all the way down here, which is retested previously. Um, you know, at the moment we fell below this weekly level and we're getting some exhaustion. We're getting some exhaustion here, obviously this large wick here previously. So let's continue to bump down time frames as we always do. Daily time frame is still overall very bearish, um, red over blue right here. I'm just gonna switch up. I'm gonna share my other screen. Boom. Hold on. You see my other screen or you still see this screen? I see Telegram. You see Telegram? All right, good. All right, bring this up. Boom. All right, cool. All right, so on this daily time frame, we're still bearish in the sense that we got red over blue, riding all the way down. We had this little bit of a pullback, but obviously a lot of, um, you know, a lot of indecision here, these dojis forming. So we need to continue to cycle down. And then this four hour is really what I'm focused on right now. This four hour time frame has been bearish, making lower lows, lower high, broke this level, started to make this low right here, red over blue was maintained. Um, now we just got a pullback, pullback through the moving averages. And we had these two bearish engulfing candles 
Um, both of those is pretty much where we're looking for entry. So this first candle that formed, this bearish engulfing, really no breaks of structure there, but um, this second candle right here actually broke below this level, had a little bit of a retest um, and found resistance. So this is the trade that we're currently in right now. We've got stops above this lower high, this previous level right there. So we're gonna look to continue to maintain this. Um, we ultimately just need to break this level right now. We need to break this level. Um, if we break this level, I could see us easily getting down to this level right here, retesting this level about 30 pips away. Um, which would be good, get our get ourselves into profit, get ourselves to break even. So that's USEF right now. Then this is where it gets interesting. DXY is obviously bearish. We just had on the four hour this nice, huge bearish engulfing candle, or I guess, yeah, bearish engulfing, just this huge bearish candle, rejection of the moving averages, um, you know, below this daily support. So, you know, a lot of a lot of bearish direction here going to the downside. As I come over to NZD USD, um, this is interesting. I've had this trade marked up for quite a while. We've been trying to get a short out of this red zone and this trend line. And down to the daily time frame, obviously, we're still bullish. Down to the four hour time frame, um, we are still bearish, you know, in the sense that we made this high and we're pretty much breaking this level right now. As I come down to the one hour, this is what I'm looking at. Um, and basically, what I'm waiting for now is we're looking for that break below the retest so we can get short. This thing's obviously falling off. You know, at the moment it's already up about 30 pips. So we're pretty much gonna look for, at this point we need some sort of pullback. Let's use this one. We just need a lower high to form to confirm that this is truly the new trend. Um, which, which I do foresee happening. So we're gonna look for some sort of pullback, rejection of this support now turn resistance level, um, and then we'll get short on this and you know we'll look to go to the downside. So this is NU at the moment, definitely have a break of structure here um, that we gotta be mindful of. And let's bump over to UCAD. So UCAD, let's bump up to the weekly time frame. Weekly time frame overall is bullish. Um, most previously we formed this huge bearish engulfing candle, you know, which was telling me that there could be more sellers in the market at the moment. As I come down to the daily time frame, we're looking and we're still bearish. We broke this support, pulled back, made this confirmed lower high. So basically until this is broken on the daily time frame, we are still in a bearish trend. So until that is broken, um, as I come down to the four hour, we're starting to see the four hour. We're starting to see four hour structure be tested right now. Basically, we had this low form pullback, this new low form. This was the lower high that formed. Let me clean this up. Boom. Um, so we're getting a little bit of a break right now of this level. We just broke above it. Um, we'll see how these next, these next candles form. I'm just very hesitant in this area. Um, as I kind of posted earlier this week on Sunday, I'm looking for price to break higher, pull back and find support before doing any longs. So let's go down to the lower time frame, down to the 30 minute. Um, so pretty much down on the 30 minute time frame, if this level breaks, I will look for shorts. Boom. And then like we wrote on the higher time frame, if we pull up, make a new high, pull back, make a higher low, um, you know, similar to this was all in a downtrend. So if we just pull up, make a higher low, you know, get, some, get in on some sort of entry, but we're just gonna have to be patient on this and uh, see how this plays out, see how DXY kind of plays out right now. Let's go over to GU. So GU is another trade that I've been scoping that right now is playing out, but, um, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to be patient on this. We're up on the weekly time frame. Obviously, overall, very bearish. We're retesting this monthly resistance level as I come down to the daily. Um, daily time frame, I had pulled on. Fibs were bullish because we broke this high, made this high, broke this lower high, made this high, higher high right here, pulled back, made a higher low. Now we're getting this rejection. We're falling off a little bit. As I come down to the four hour, 
um, the four hour time frame is basically bullish right now. We broke this level right here. Boom. So we gotta make note right now the weekly time frame is bearish, the daily time frame is bullish, the four hour time frame is bullish. Um, but as I come down to the lower time frames, the 30 minute obviously just broke bearish, broke this level. We're up a good amount of pips right now on that. Um, in order to enter, you know, I had I had put this on and I wanted some sort of pullback before I got in on entry. That's still what I'm looking for, guys. We still need to start to transition this four hour time frame, you know, a little bit more and this daily time frame. Um, like on the four hour, we're getting that cross of the moving averages right here. Up on this daily time frame, we're still yet to cross. We still got to test this moving average right here. We still got to see if this breaks this minor level of support um, on this daily time frame. I had this drawn previously, but it's becoming relevant again. So I'm going to bring this back on pretty much right there um, is where I'm looking for this to find some sort of pullback. And as this thing pulls back, we will just wait for the first lower high to hit. So I'm going to look for pullback here in this area. We'll see if it comes all the way up to retest um, these levels up here. But if we look left, you know, obviously it was in an uptrend very clear uptrends, broke to the downside, broke this trend line, you know, broke this level and we started to fall. So this was definitely an entry that we've been covering this and that I've been looking for. Um, but unfortunately I wasn't able to get in on it. You know, that's not, it's not the end of the world. It is what it is. Um, but as I'm looking back on it, I'm just trying to see, you know, what could have been my potential entry. And when we talk about entries, we're looking at Two different styles, you know, one style is obviously wait for the pullback, wait for the lower high, wait for it to confirm. Um, but when, when we're near these monthly key levels, guys, I like, to, I like to basically take a little bit more of an aggressive entry. So pretty much what I mean by that is I would literally enter on just the break of this. So either this candle or the following candle, and you got to put your stops. I would even be down, say on the 30 minute and you get these two candles form, you know, right here, I would have had to put my stops right above at this level, 70 pips. And, you know, you're in a decent trade right now. You're up at one to one. Um, you could see a pullback and then get into some profits. So that would be one style of entry, you know, just the breakout entry. Then the other entries wait for the pullback. I didn't get in on this move. So that's why right now I'm talking about price potentially coming into this level, then pulling back because it's getting a lot of momentum right now. And, um, you know, we're going to have to wait. We're just going to have to be patient. So let's go to EU. Um, EU on the weekly time frame. So EU on the weekly time frame is, is actually breaking resistance. Um, you know, broke, retested right here. So this is actually in an uptrend on the weekly. On the daily time frame, this also broke resistance, made a high, pulled back made this higher low um, on this four hour time frame i started to see that we actually broke some structure right here so i always look left i always look left this was a lower low this was a lower high this was a lower low this was a lower high then we pulled back made this lower high with the moving averages pulled back again retested that level then we broke as soon as this happened four hour time frame is bullish we're looking to get in on these areas, boom, right here, every time, made a new high right there, looking to get in on this area, all the way up into this zone. Um, so as I go down to the 30 minute, um, you know, I can look for potential entries. There won't always be an entry according to my rules. Um, pretty much what I mean by that is, as this high forms, we'll look at lower time frame structure, the 30 minute, this was a lower high, then it pulled back here, um, basically started to like triple bottom here. I don't have an entry here, realistically, unless I were to take on this candle, this breakout, and then put my stops below here. I really have no entry here because I'm looking for a clear break of structure. This is the most recent lower high that forms. That's why I talked about potentially entering on this candle. But again, that's just a very, very aggressive entry. 
I would have had to put my stops all the way down here below this. And then, you know, you're targeting a new high. Um, we did, the reason why this isn't a bad trade is because we did manage to get to one to one. At this point, I would move my stops to break even. And we even get a little bit higher. Maybe I take a little bit of profit off the table. You know, maybe I exit the order as this happens on this lower high. And then we can keep, you know, about 20 pips or so. So it all depends how you maintain that order. And then all the way in this area, you know, until we wouldn't be entering, we have this bullish variation that I highlighted. Then this is the lower high that I need to break. Um, once that breaks, we can enter on 30 minute entries. So pretty much we broke that level, made a high, pulled back, made this higher low. And then that is where I would have potentially entered on this July 13th. Boom. And then where, where would you target? You know, you'd be targeting first one to one. This is where I'd move stops to break even. Then we came up to about 1.5. Again, at this point, you'd be, you'd decide what to do. You know, should you take some profits or not? I would probably have just held the order and move stops to break even. We would have got stopped out of break even, but then we see, you know, this go down. This is another potential entry right here. And again, we're just trying to ride this 30 minute trend at this point. You know, we got up to about one to one again. So we'd have stops that break even. So these are just some examples of entries, you know, just riding this 30 minute trend um, that we have. So let's, that was EU. I believe you, you already went over um, UJ, right? Yep, yep, go UJ. UJ, got Yusuf, had a little bit of a retest, all right. Now let's take a look at GJ. Let's bump up. So GJ correlates very closely with GU. Um, so I'll definitely keep that in mind, you know, when we're looking at these pairs. And on this weekly time frame, GJ has been bearish, you know, overall for quite some time. Made this low, made this lower high, made this low, made this lower high. Now we've been stuck in this area, this consolidation area. Pretty much um, what, what's going on right now is we retested this weekly level. We had these two bearish candles form. Um, but then this bullish variation, this morning star. And as I bump down time frames, I'm looking at this daily time frame. It is bullish. We broke this lower high right here, made this high, pulled back, made this higher low. Um, so that daily time frame was bullish. This four hour time frame, even. Um, look at this four hour time frame. We broke this level right here, made a high. Um, then we rode this all the way up right there. So, really, on this four hour, we're trying to pull back right now and make our first higher low. Um, but if we were trying to really get into this position just based on this weekly resistance level alone, I would be all the way on the 30 minute, 30 minute time frame. And I would basically be even the one hour. I would basically be looking at it like this. We had this, this higher high form, this higher low had this high form. And then basically we had this. We had this break of structure, break of support, pull back, get in on first lower high, which could have been there or could have been here. And then we could have had stops above this level. So these are two trades that I kind of been waiting on that I missed out on. Um, and this is just to show kind of how we look at structure on these pairs. You know, obviously we were in an uptrend at my point A here, point B over here, you know, point C was retested. Then we had the break, lower high. And, uh, you know, now this is obviously a really good trade into quite a bit of profit now. So this was a, just an example of GJ, what's going on. What we need to wait on, you know, on this one hour time frame, I do anticipate getting down to this lower level. Um, so we're going to probably get some sort of pullback now. And I imagine we're going to pull back to around this level. And as we pull back to that level, I will look for lower highs and I'm going to look to take some short positions on GJ. So I'm going to update some premium analysis. We're going to go into the discord in this premium analysis channel. Um, I'm going to put in 
some analysis that we just went over on lower time frames where we're looking for some entries on here. Um, this is the channel that me and Nick update on a daily basis that is for members only. So I'm gonna update this after this. If you guys are interested, wanna get in on this, it's just seven bucks, seven dollars one time fee. Um, if you guys wanna get in on the Discord giveaway, just put your name in the chat and um, you know, put your name in the chat. I'll do the giveaway pretty much after this call and I'll put the winner into the chat. And then right now we also have this little deal going on. We got only three spots left for premium signals. It's 149 one-time fee. So if you guys want premium signals, everything here is included. Um, signals, fundamental updates, these live sessions, obviously. And then there are some other live sessions we do as well for the signals chats. And then 35 plus page training plan. And there's a full course included with this as well. So it's just 149 one-time fee. Again, there's three spots left um, with that. So if you guys are interested in that, just shoot me a message. If you guys have any questions right now related to anything we went over in the session, um, feel free to ask. You know, feel free to ask. This session is for you guys. If there's anything else you guys want us to go over, I know this session was a little bit quicker um, today. So if you want me and Nick to do anything, anything else, you know, just pretty much put in the chat. Put in the chat right now. We'll give you guys a minute or two. Um, and if not, we'll pretty much end the session unless you got anything, Nick. No, I mean, this was a, it was a little bit quicker. I mean, we did cover a lot. I mean, this is going to be recorded as well for those who did miss it. Uh, should you wait for news to trade? Do you trade oil? We don't trade oil as much anymore. Uh, but you should kind of either, when you're learning especially, you should avoid trading news. That's my recommendation. Uh, and so you can really learn fundamentals, understand if and when to trade news, and if it's with your sentiment, how to you know interpret it into your technicals. So definitely in the beginning of trading, until you're you know a little more uh, you know involved and immersed in the forex market, you know you definitely want to not trade news. Have you traded stocks? I think everyone's kind of traded stocks. I mean, I haven't traded stocks as aggressively as I trade forex, but you know I do have some stock experience. What about you, Angelo? You ever trade stocks? Yeah, I've traded stocks a little bit. I, I just personally found. Um, I found more opportunity in trading Forex, you know, just for day trading. The volume is insane. The markets are open all day. Um, I think technical analysis, at least from my perspective, applies pretty well. And, uh, you know, I've just become more, we're obviously Forex league, so we enthuse more in Forex. I know a lot of people trade US 30. You know, someone just said, please make analysis on US 30. We don't look too much at US 30. We're not too involved in that, you know, right now, but maybe in the future something will come up. Yeah, the US. Definitely look for it. I mean, we're doing stuff all the time, so don't be surprised if you know you do see some other charts. But you know, who knows? Another thing that we're trying to bring to the market as well is uh, basically like a copy trader. So you would pretty much sign up for our signals. Right now, we give the signals in the Discord chat. Um, but what would be different is you would there's this app that you could sign up for, and you would put in your account, obviously if you'd like to, and you basically follow our signals, and you can. Every single trade that we make on our accounts, you guys can copy onto your account. So it really is us, the account management. A lot of people ask about that. That's something that we're trying to, to get going that we're looking into right now. Um, yeah, you could trade sep you could trade separately as well. You know, it doesn't matter. You got deal capital to start. I mean, you know, if you're trying to learn, I would suggest having at least like 500 bucks, 250 bucks in your trading account. Yeah, I personally use FTMO. Nick doesn't use FTMO. What is the benefits of the FTMO challenge? I mean, it's pretty self, pretty self explanatory. Yeah. You get access to 100,000 in capital. I think the benefits that I've learned that are different than just the capital that you get is it forces you to be more disciplined in your in your approach to trading. You know, you have a risk limit every day. Um, instead of blowing an entire account in a day, if you fail 5%, you literally are going to be out on the account. You know what I'm saying? So. There's definitely a lot of lessons to be learned in doing the FTMO challenge alone. Do you cater for small accounts? I personally don't cater for small accounts because um, small accounts, I would just treat the same way that I would treat a larger account. Just trade one to 2%. You know, the goal for you should just be to get more capital and everything like that. Um, thank you. Thank you. 
for the positive feedback. What is the benefits of F2O challenge? I mean, I already went over that. Do you cater for small accounts? F2O is good for beginners. I mean, FTMO is not exactly for beginners. It's more for people that are ready to trade and get into the live markets and kind of like gain access to capital. I would say FTMO is for consistent traders. You know, FTMO is probably for the more intermediate um, to advanced. Um, it's a great opportunity though. If you guys want to do the free trial, you know, you could always just do the free trial for FTMO. Um, you know, like I said, you're going to, you're going to learn a lot. You're going to learn a lot. Um, from going through FTMO and completing the challenge. I learned a lot personally from doing it. I think before it's hard to, when you're just trading your own account, you have to self-discipline yourself. You know, you have to trade one to 2%. Like it's, it's hard to self-discipline when you're with FTMO. It's a little bit different. Um, you, you literally will lose the account if you lose 5% on, in the day. So like, unless you want to be literally ridiculous and stubborn, you know, you gotta, you gotta kind of wise up and, uh, and do the right thing and, and, you know, work the right way. So it's going to adjust the way you're thinking about trading for sure. I've gotten that feedback from most people that have done it is that they're like now, even on their own account, they're like, all right, well now I'm trading, trading it kind of like FTMO because it's reality. I mean, you guys should want to be learning so that you can get access to more money. Um, and the only way to prove to get access to more money is to be consistent. The only way to be consistent without losing your damn mind is to only risk one to 2%. You know, it's not risk that much on your trades. So we got Yousef's pushing a little bit. DXY, oh, DXY is dumping now. Yeah, it's pushing. It's good stuff. All right, guys, so, yep, yeah, it's dropping. It's dropping. Hell yeah. Oh. All right, so again, guys, if you are in the Discord, you know, utilize the uh, analysis section or the, you know, the Forex channel. Drop some charts in there share with the community, engage a little bit, and, uh, you know, just have a good time. You know, that's what this uh, Discord's all about. We love having these live sessions, talking to you guys, getting some feedback, sharing some charts, sharing, sharing some ideas, and, uh, you know, just doing our thing. So, yeah, if you guys aren't in the free course, if you guys aren't in the Telegram, everything like that, make sure you guys get in that. Um, if you have any questions, just shoot us a message on Discord. And, again, everyone that submitted their name for the for the giveaway, I'm going to – do that after this. I'll get it out, you know, before the end of today, you know, as soon as possible. And uh, we will be live again tomorrow at 9 a.m. EST, same time. And uh, we look forward to, you know, seeing you guys tomorrow. All right. Awesome. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.